Well, I may have broken the 2021 Camaro ZL1 rear end now clicks and uh, yeah, it doesn't sound right. Hopefully nothing serious. We'll go ahead and dive in and see if we can figure it out. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. Today, real quick, hopefully, troubleshooting video on my 2021 Camaro ZL1, which you can see right here behind me, beyond my uh, relatively messy workspace. And uh, yeah, anyways, I've had the car for about two years, 5,000 miles, yeah, not a lot of miles because I work remote typically and I don't drive a ton. I have a couple of vehicles I drive when I'm shuttling my kids around. And so mostly this car is, even though it is technically a daily driver, it is mostly a pleasure vehicle. And uh, you know, video, I like doing videos on and just enjoying uh, the driving experience. And uh, you know, it's been mostly problem free, <laughs> but uh, recently the rear end of my car, somewhere, I haven't really narrowed it down yet, somewhere in the back half of the car, as I drive with low speeds and do some turning, you know, side to side a little bit, the car uh, gives me a odd clicking sound. And it's usually a couple clicks and I can be, uh, I can put the car in neutral. I'm still kind of coasting. It still makes a sound, which uh, I believe will eliminate, you know, the rear differential. But uh, so I've did a little Googling, a little research, did find a service bulletin. You can see here, I will link this in the description. This is technically for 2016, 2017 Camaros, also 2014 to 2017 Corvettes. But uh, pretty much what it says, if you experience a clicking noise, emanating from the front or real rear wheel location that it may be uh, regarding the mating surface between your wheels and your rotor brake top hat and i guess the grime or some kind of funk can get in there and it actually starts causing clicking noise which i don't really make sense to me on why it would make a clicking sound but uh, pretty much the corrective action is to pull the wheel off you know all four corners clean the surface between the wheel, so the wheel mating surface, the, the uh, rotor brake top hat cleaning surface, you wanna clean that. Don't use any kind of power tools or anything like that, just wipe it down with a rag and some brake cleaner. Scrub it down real good, make sure it's completely clean, no, you know, what they said, black or gray residue. Remove all that, dry it real good, and then reinstall the wheels uh, onto the car, and then you want to torque down the uh, lug nuts to 140 foot-pound on the Camaro, and the Corvette, I think, is 103 foot pound. So if you're, you know, watching this and you have a Corvette with this issue, maybe uh, this will be helpful for you as well and not just the Camaro folks. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm also going to look um, between the dust shield and the rotor, verify there's no like debris maybe caught in there. I'm gonna check the you know, wheel weights, make sure nothing like, you know, came undone and or it's making contact with the caliper. And I'll take a look at, you know, suspension, make sure nothing's, um, you know, came loose or clunking into something. Uh, you know, I haven't done anything significant to the suspension as of yet, so hopefully it's nothing crazy. And uh, also, while I have the car up on the quick jack, I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully resolve my issue with my check engine light. And it pretty much pops up ever since I put my uh, cat back exhaust and the secondary cat deletes. And it's running a little bit too rich on the O2 sensor, so I have some O2 sensor extensions. I will see if I can get those installed and maybe knock out both of these things at once. So. Hopefully this isn't too long-winded and uh, not too unexciting, so uh, stay tuned. Gonna go ahead and get the ZL1 up on the quick jacks. Uh, if you are interested in these quick jacks, they're pretty cool. It's like a much smaller mini lift uh, or a super jack. So uh, pretty much I'll just move one of these on to each side of my car and it hooks up to a very small little hydraulic pump system and then I can control it through this little hand controller here and I can lift my car up uh, a pretty decent height makes it much easier to work underneath of course it's not the equivalent of like a two post jet you know a two post lift where I can walk underneath my car because I just don't have the clearance for that anyways it would be awesome if I did but this will get it up so I can actually uh, sit comfortably uh, underneath the car you know I can't actually sit like on a seat but I can actually just squat underneath it kind of and uh, 
I can work on it. It's super stable. And, uh, you know, if I didn't, wasn't going to be pulling the wheels, I could also throw it in these wheel cribs underneath here, which I normally do if I'm working under the car for any significant period of time. And that will actually keep it extremely safe, uh, much safer than a jack stand or anything like that. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these quick jacks in place. This will be the first time I'm lifting with a quick jack on my Swiss tracks floor. So uh, actually up here, if you're interested on the quick jack, check out that video. And then also should be listed under there is a video on the Swiss tracks flooring. Also super cool. I love this stuff here. Love the quick jack. So check those videos out if you're interested. I'm not gonna go through the whole montage of lifting the car up. I'm just gonna get this thing up in the air and then we're gonna go ahead and start getting these wheels off. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully, hopefully get this clicking sound resolved because it's annoying. And uh, you know, you never want weird sounds coming from your car unless they're expected weird sounds, which I may be getting more of those when I get around to doing this suspension install. But uh, yeah, I'm not at that point yet. So I don't want weird sounds with my mostly stock setup. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this bad boy lifted up and we're gonna take a look. Quick jack is in place. I haven't lifted yet. Just to give you a quick preview, as you can see, it sits super close to the uh, effects here, rocker panels, whatever these are called. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, uh, it's pretty much staged. I just have just a little bit of of uh, tension lifted up onto the. I have the ZL1 add-ons, um, lift jack pads on here and then I have the, the uh, medium profile blocks that sit on the quick jack. And then uh, we have the little controller here. Here is the pump, it has quick connect lines that then attach to the quick connects off of each frame. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing lifted up and we'll uh, start knocking this thing out. Just getting ready to uh, lift this thing up real quick. Make sure there is still some weight on these tires and uh, go ahead and loosen up your lug nuts. I have this 22 millimeter non-marring lug nut socket. I'll put a link in the description for this. And I'll use this to loosen up all of these lug nuts just a little bit, and uh, it should prevent it from scuffing up my wheel. She's up in the air. You can see it's pretty, pretty good height on this quick jack. And uh, I loosened up all the lug nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this one tire at a time. And I believe I'm just gonna start on the back ones because that's where the sound's coming from. And I'm gonna pull the wheel off. I'm around here. As you notice, it's sitting on the locks. So will you actually bring it a little bit past the swing uh, camera, uh, whatever they call it, caster lock or whatever, flops over and then you back it down and set the actual tension on these locks so it's not sitting on the hydraulic system itself. I picked up a couple cans of some brake clear and I'll just use up some old microfibers and I'm gonna put a uh, like an old drain pan or something under here and maybe some bags just so I don't skit, break clean, dripping all over the uh, Swiss Tracks tiles. So that's one of the disadvantages of Swiss Tracks tiles. You don't want to spill a bunch of stuff into them because you don't have to pop them all out, clean underneath it, and that's kind of a pain. So I'd rather prevent me from spilling it and then I don't have to worry about the cleanup. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this wheel off real quick. Just about have this first wheel uh, off one lug nut left using my trusty Ryobi. But since I'm not actually breaking anything loose with this thing, it's perfectly fine. Still running the, uh, uh, the sleeved uh, lug nut removal socket. 
and I'll see if I can not drop this. All right, wheel is off. And this is what we're presented with here in my rotor. And I'm gonna go ahead and just look over with a real good light, see if I have any uh, rubbing or um, anything abnormal happening between the wheel and the caliper. So I'll notice any additional maybe scratches on the caliper. And then once I give it a good look, quick look over, I'm gonna go ahead and get my brake cleaner and I'm gonna blast this whole area right here, scrub it down real good. You can see it does have a little bit of a buildup, nothing crazy, but I'm gonna go ahead and get all that off. And, you know, it looks like the axle nut, um, I mean, it's staked. So, it, I mean, it shouldn't have moved, but I did notice when I pulled this wheel off of all the wheels, this one, the lug nuts didn't feel quite as tight as the other one. So I'm not sure if maybe it was, a, the lug nuts have worked themselves loose um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and look everything off camera so I won't bore anybody and then uh, we'll circle back here. Just looking over everything, you know, I don't see any abnormal wear marks or, or any, any kind of damage. Um, you know, here's the axle nut. It looks... Like it's, you know, still torqued to spec, lined up with the marking uh, indicator uh, line. And uh, you don't see any wear on the caliper. Maybe something that was rubbing on it between the wheel and the caliper. Uh, you know, I'll have to comb through the dust shield, but I don't really see anything in the dust shield either. So I think this wheel is good. I, it could have been those lug nuts. They just didn't feel quite torqued to spec. I don't know if they worked themselves loose. Um, I haven't retorqued them in a long time and, uh, you know, anything's possible with that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get this thing wiped down and, uh, we'll hit up my wheel, which is sitting over here, wipe that one down as well. And like I said, we're just hitting this, uh, mating surface on the wheel and on the hub. As you can see, it kind of does look like it's, you know, wearing a little bit, um, you know, like it almost has a little bit of a layer of this grime which could be causing an issue and uh you know hopefully it's something like that the lug nuts and you know i'll be very happy with that as as the solution and note i did put a oil pan type drain thing under here so i'm dripping it down into that i'm not just dumping brake cleaner all over the place and i just got this uh, kind of old microfiber and just trying to scrub everything uh, nice and clean get that build up removed you know you see it's starting to improve uh, pretty significant from what it was looking at like uh, prior to cleaning and also giving uh, your rotors a quick wipe down as well of course don't wipe it down with the same grubby side of your microfiber that you just used to scrub this uh, mating surface with. So I'm gonna knock these wheels out and uh, these rotor top hats out and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the wheel after I finish this one. And uh, you know, hopefully this is the improvement to remove that annoying sound. As you can see here, it's definitely significantly cleaner than it was. So, uh, Hopefully this is a ticket and I'm going to head over to the wheel over at the wheel. Pretty grimy. I probably should clean <laughs> the backside of this thing, but you know, it's starting to get dark already and I'm just trying to get rid of this single issue and I'll address this later. But anyways, here's the mating surface. Doesn't look too bad. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to hit this thing up with the brake cleaner, clean this whole area right here and uh, you know looking at the you know the wheel weights they look um you know undisturbed i don't see any ones that may have fallen off so uh you know that's probably not an issue i don't see any weird scratches or marring showing me i'm rubbing on anything 
So that's probably not the issue. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this up, wipe it down, and then we're gonna get this wheel back on the car. Have this surface cleaned up pretty good. I did notice a little bit, hard to see, scratching right here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how that occurs. I mean, in a little bit up here, just on this little lip here, there's a little bit of like scratches. I'm not sure if that's just normal or, you know, something to, to be uh, noted. But uh, uh, yeah, so got that uh, cleaned up and we're gonna get this thing over back on the car. Both back wheels are cleaned up, remounted, uh, of course not torqued. And of course how my day goes, I realized once I was getting ready to pull this wheel off that somehow I have this beautiful chunk missing out of my wheel and yeah to uh, say things a little bit lately I'm definitely not pleased to see that <laughs> I'm not sure if that was something impacted that while I was driving or just bum luck or what um, yeah so and maybe that's excuse to buy some wheels and tires i don't know and i also noticed on this back wheel i have a small nail or something in the tire um so i didn't notice this thing does lose air very slowly maybe a pound or two a week but it probably is the treat that i found in the tread of this tire so this is the ultimate excitement here Chunk missing out of the wheel, nail in the tire. You know, that's how it goes for for uh, for me uh, many times. Uh, anyways, I did do a quick wipe on the inside of the uh, wheel. Nothing crazy, just, you know, some warm water. And I'm not going to do the front wheels. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop this thing down and just see if what I worked on uh, has fixed the clicking sound. And I'm not going to work on the oxygen sensor, check engine light, because it's actually later than I was thinking is hot and I just want to see if my actual issue that you know I was working on the clicking sound is resolved if not then I will delve and do the front and look further but I'm hoping this resolved it either the lug nut torque on the driver's side not being correct or the mating service I did notice driver's side the lug nuts were not loose but they were super easy to break uh, break loose compared to all the other lug nuts, which were, you know, I had to put some force into those, it came loose really easy. And I did notice there was a lot more buildup between the wheel and the top hat on the driver's side than on the passenger side, which was tight and the, and the lug nuts were, it seemed, it seemed like they were torqued to spec. So I'm thinking maybe if the lug nuts come loose a little bit, you get more grime buildup between the wheel and the, the, you know, the rotor top hat, which then after it builds up to a certain point, can start causing clicking sound, or it could just be the lug nuts have worked herself loose enough to cause issues. So I'm gonna keep staring at this and getting relatively pissed off, but you know, hey, maybe I'll buy some wheels I've had my eyes on and, you know, go full, you know, full turbo mode with the supercharger. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this bad boy back on the ground. Um, I'll torque these wheels I'll retorque all the wheels to 140 uh, foot pound and then I'll just spin around the block and we'll see hey is the clicking fixed did I fix it or you know is it worse or am I just going to keep being mad and looking at that freaking chunk in my dang wheel <sighs> yeah all right we'll uh drop her down adding the 140 foot pound torque to the final wheel lug nut have it dialed into 140 on this relatively cheap torque wrench. Definitely always invest in a torque wrench. Still using the um, relatively safe lug nut socket. And uh, finish this up.
We are good to go on torquing all of the lug nuts to spec. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the quick jack out of the way. We'll hop in the car, move my, <laughs> my NV3500 out of the way, and we'll just do a quick circle around the hood and uh, hope for the best. The moment of truth. Will she click or will she clack or uh, will she actually function and sound as it should? Ugh. All right. drive around for a few minutes and uh, then we'll uh, check back with the uh, sound. I'm um, moving you know kind of how I was before a little uh, slow 20 to 30 mile an hour driving uh, kind of you know moving the wheel back and forth some and I don't hear the clicking like I had before maybe a maybe a tiny little bit but I mean, it was pretty apparent before. I mean, it was hard to tell in the video. But, uh, you know, I think it's resolved. Uh, when I get the car up on the lift again, I'll do the front wheels just to make sure I have everything covered. But I think my main issue, uh, you know, it, I think it has been resolved. I'm in touring mode, so the exhaust is a lot quieter, so it's easier to hear. And I could I could hear it really loud over sport mode and track mode before, and now, you know, I don't really hear anything in touring. So we'll go ahead and head back in the garage and wrap this up. There we have it. It looks like the root issue was the lug nuts on my driver's side wheel had either uh, loosened up, uh, probably a decent amount. I mean, they came off pretty easy. I mean, they weren't falling off but I didn't have to put any force to remove those uh, lug nuts. I mean, they were significantly looser, if that's a word, looser than all of the other lug nuts and all the other wheels. So I'm not sure how those came, uh, came, you know, loosened up over time and nothing else did, I'm not sure. And another thing, this one was also had the most grime packed between the uh, wheel and the, uh, top hat of the rotor, clean that up both sides. I didn't get around to doing the front. I didn't get around to doing my oxygen sensor, um, you know, the extension uh, pieces to get rid of my check engine light. I'll have to save that for another video. Uh, it is now quite dark out and uh, you know, I have work tomorrow, so I had to wrap it up. And uh, also finding the chip in my passenger side rear wheel was kind of demotivating. I'm sure you guys have experienced it yourself where you're working on something, you notice some damage or something else going on and you just kind of lose a little bit of your your a little bit of your drive and you just want to wrap it up and get what you're working on done and just you kind know, of take a breather so that's what i'm doing today got these done drove it around the block uh maybe about 10 minutes i didn't hear any clicking maybe a tiny little bit maybe from the front uh but maybe maybe it's just road debris and road noise uh before it was super super obvious uh the clicking sound was even though in the video clip you can't really tell driving it even in sport mode or track mode i could hear the clicking going 20, 30-ish, super, super, uh, super noticeable. My son, he's 10, he noticed it and was wondering what was going on. I drove this time, put it in touring mode so I could hear it even better without the exhaust quite as loud. I didn't hear it. Uh, maybe just some rocks getting kicked up. So I think that's what it is. And then also I got to contend with my, now I have a small nail in my tire, probably causing some other issues, maybe a super slow leak. So I have to deal with that. Maybe I'll get some different wheels, you know, if I don't, my wife doesn't notice. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, maybe if you have the same issues, uh, check out this video. Maybe this was useful. Uh, as always, feel free to uh, subscribe wherever that is down here, down here, up here, wherever. Check out my other videos, especially on the Swiss tracks, flooring, if you like that. The quick jack lift, if you liked how I could get this up in the air, pretty easy. I mean, it's they're heavy, so I mean, they're probably 100 pound frames each. So, I mean, if can't lift that then you might have some issues unless you can store you know underneath the car or something like that i have them hanging on the wall and uh yeah so hopefully this was a, a, a useful video 
and I'll catch you guys on the next one. As always, uh, peace. <laughs>